everyone welcome to episode 33 we are close to the end of the uh, the 113 build and in this one I'll be starting basic groundwork construction now if you've been uh, following along a year and on Instagram you'll know that the 113 has been completed and uh, I've also completed these six uh, 35 scale figures and uh, the next step is to move on to diorama construction the first step is to uh, construct a foam base. Next we'll have to contour the foam pieces to uh, make a realistic landscape. I'll be applying a clay ground covering product from uh, Ammo MIG. I'll show you how that works. And then finally I'll be doing a 113 track imprint into the clay. But first a word from the Rhino. Guys, as you know by now, this build is uh, kindly sponsored by Zululand Hobbies here in South Africa. Do check out the Zululand Hobbies website. They've received quite a lot of new stock, amongst them uh, some exciting kits from Zwerzda models. And get yours before they're all sold out. As you probably know by now, I like to use these uh, MDF uh, wooden uh, trays to build my dioramas on. And this is one I prepared earlier. Uh, this has been sprayed with a, uh, a black base coat and some protective uh, clear coat. These being from Rustoleum, two satin colors that I used there. This is also the same tray I used when I planned this diorama earlier. You'll recall that from a previous video. And uh, the base that I'll be using for this is a piece of foam that I got from an old hiking mattress. Uh, this stuff is actually quite nice to work with, very soft, very pliable. I'll also be using some construction foam from AK, in this case a 6mm uh, piece of foam. You recall from the, uh, from the planning video that uh, I wanted a road surface in the center and uh, some sloping ground on uh, both sides of the, uh, the road or the track and uh, for this I'll be using the construction foam. Eventually I decided on using the 6mm sheet and uh, I marked out a uh, small corner from that. The stuff is pretty easy to cut with a hobby knife and that was my next step, just to carve out the, uh, the corner section there. There you go, these are the two corners with the, uh, the raised the sloping ground on uh, on both sides of the track. Do a little test fit there with the 113, that looks perfect. And uh, next step was to mark out the exact position where I uh, want the 113. More or less there. Having now done this, I'm going to use my Dremel tool and a uh, sanding bit and uh, start cutting some uh, some ruts into uh, into this road surface typically where quite a few of these tracks uh, would, have, um, would have driven over on the muddy ground the nice thing about this blue foam of course is that it can be sanded with a uh, with a sander of course this is all very messy stuff and uh, you keep the uh, the dust buster close by we're using all the noisy tools today keep the uh, the work area clean and there we go this is the, uh, the road surface. You can see the sloping ground, the uneven uh, track surface or road surface. And uh, this is certainly exactly what we planned in the beginning. The next step is to glue these in place. I use some ordinary uh, PVA glue and a few pins. The pins can stay in there just to keep everything nice and secure. And uh, because the, uh, the gray foam a, such a, a snug fit, I decided to just keep it in there. These are the reference images I selected right in the beginning and you can see there's plenty of mud and uh, one small detail are these little stuffs of grass that you can see there on top of the uh, the muddy surface. For this I'll be using uh, tufts from uh, Vallejo. I'll be gluing these in place with ultra glue and of course I'll need to do this now before applying all the, all the mud and the texture that we'll be doing later. Something like that, just to keep it in place. 
to uh, protect the uh, the sides of the painted tray, I covered it with masking tape. This white stuff. There we go. To do the muddy texture, I used a new product from uh, Ammo Mick, Terraform Clay. This is actual clay. Because this is the first time I've used this product, I decided to do two test pieces uh, a bit earlier, just to make sure I'm familiarized myself with the way this uh, this product behaves. And also because I needed to press the 113 into this clay later, I need to protect the uh, the tracks first. And I use some cling film for this. Quite a neat little trick. Now this stuff is, as I said, actual clay. It's an acrylic product. Can be uh, diluted with water. But for the the track imprints, I'm going to use the uh, the clay um, as is, straight out of the jar. I'm using a uh, a palette knife just to spread this across the. Uh, the road or the track surface there, more or less even. To make it a bit easier to make the track imprints, I'm going to use some water and the stippling brush and just slightly moisten the uh, the top surface, the top layer of the, uh, the clay. Once this is done, I can now press the 113 down into the clay to make the track imprints. Of course, this will also push the uh, the clay up by the sides to make a realistic imprint. The next step is to uh, mix some of this, uh, this clay with uh, some water as well as orange brown from Vallejo just to get that uh, realistic Vietnam orange dust color. It's also the same color that we used earlier with, uh, with the weathering. There we go, but thinner, thinner mud if you wish. And this is now carefully uh, spread over the uh, the track surface, the road surface there with a pallet knife. And uh, you'll see the color is closer to what we used uh, for weathering. Again, using my stippling brush just to smooth this out. That is the, uh, the result happiness so far. Next, I'm using a track band from one of the 113 kits in my stash. Yes, for some reason, I have a lot of 113 kits. And uh, because this is an acrylic product, I can uh, easily use this track just to uh, make the, uh, the imprint and uh, just rinse it off and it'll go back into the box nice and clean again. I did a few of these, uh, these imprints with that piece of track band. But also need some boots and for this I used this, uh, this stencil, the stamp from Mini Wall Paint. Of course this is the modern NATO boot, uh, not exactly the, uh, the Panama sole that the Vietnam era jungle boots have, but uh, because the, the mud is wet, this certainly will give the, uh, the, the correct effect. And there you have it, the boot prints, as well as the 113 imprint. Once the stuff is dried, this is the result, certainly happy with that. All the necessary texturing is there, and uh, we're certainly well on our way to uh, moving on. To get some color contrast, I'm using some uh, dark earth from Vallejo and I'm carefully airbrushing this into all the recessed areas. And uh, basically I did the same with the, uh, the lighter colors just to get some uh, color contrast into the, uh, the contoured groundwork. I also used some Vallejo flat earth acrylic paint and I dry brushed this onto all the, uh, the raised uh, muddy uh, sections. Now at some point the 113 will need to be fixed to this and uh, for that I use this nail glued to the underside of, uh, of the uh, armored burst nail carrier and this now needs to be pressed into the foam underneath through the clay, more or less there, that was a bit scary, fortunately nothing broke off and the 113 has an anchor point. This of course will be glued in place later on. Guys, and that's it. That is the basic uh, groundwork done. Uh, we can now move on to the next section. That's something I'll cover in the next video. I'll be covering all this with a uh, gloss varnish just to get that uh, muddy surface uh, look. And I'll also be adding some standing water, but that's all coming in the next video. So please join me next time. As always, a uh, list of all the products that I've used available from your local hobby shop. And uh, if you're curious to follow this build, do uh, follow me on Instagram and uh, you'll see plenty of updates there.